Hey, welcome back everybody. I'm Lou, and this is Metal Lens Reviews. What's up? So if this is your first time here, checking out my channel, you like what you see, thank you. Please do me that favor of like, comment, subscribe. As I mentioned before, it really helps me grow the channel, spread it to the masses, and of course, motivates me to provide you guys with more content to watch. Alright, so this video, it's a reaction video, and it was inspired by my buddy Ange. Um, you can find him on Mad Ange on YouTube. Uh, he did a video like this, a reaction video, to uh, travel to Italy. All the tips and uh, need-to-know information if you want to, uh, you know, really enjoy your stay over there. Um, this one is Russia. My audience right now is Russia, with, you know, Russian people, which, you know, makes sense because I've been doing a lot of Russian artists, so, you know, kind of falls in line with that. Um, I myself, I'm Mediterranean, uh, Southern European. My people, you know, Sicilian, Southern uh, Italy, and I do want to go there, obviously. But I want to say fairly recently, I have this um, historic attraction to uh, Eastern Orthodoxy, which is an Eastern version of Christianity. Um, a lot of this is followed by, you know, Greeks, Russians, Eastern Europeans. Uh, but it's obviously very prevalent in Russia, you know. Uh, just look at most of the churches. Very historic churches, very deep ties to uh, the Eastern Romans, the Byzantines. So Russia is very historic in that sense. And of course, their history is pretty wide. So depending on what you think of Russia, whatever, all politics aside, uh, Russia has always been, a, you know, a, you know, attractive to me in that sense because of the historic uh, background and um, you know their, their version of Christianity, uh, Eastern Orthodoxy. Like I said, I really, I really dig the the structures and everything. So that is definitely on my list of things to do when I do travel. And this lady right here is going to uh, kind of explain to us, and I'm just going to you know interject every now and then and just you know give you guys my uh, two cents. Um, so yeah, this should be interesting. This is just, her, let me uh, get her name so I could properly introduce her. Hey Nadine, okay. So I'm assuming she, you know, talks about places probably she's traveled and uh, gives you some need to know information, which is always vital, especially if you're traveling somewhere foreign for the first time. So this should be pretty knowledgeable and I'm all about it. All right, well. Let me stop yapping. I'm gonna cue the video up and we're gonna check it out. All right. It says Russia. <clears throat> excuse me. Russia travel for the first time for first timers. All right. Let's do this. So we had a new idea for a video series on this channel where we cover some useful information about specific countries or destinations. This would also include some of our personal experiences and opinions of what we liked, what we didn't like, and what we wish we did differently. This is the first video of that series and Russia is our first country. We traveled to Russia in July of 2017. We flew into Moscow where we spent four days and then took a four hour high speed train to St. Petersburg where we spent another four days. Now, if you haven't seen the videos that we made from the trip, check out the links in the description to go give them a watch. These so real quick, their subway station. So where I live at, we have a subway, you know, to get from A to B, but whatever. A, a lot of cities have a, have a subway uh, station, um, subway system. Russia's sub subway system is incredible. It's like, a you know, it's just, it's just different. It's not what you would think. When you get the impression of an American, and I, I, don't, I haven't been th that far out to, you know, all the 50s and so states in the United States, um, so I don't know how their subway systems run, but ours is kind of funky uh, in the city I come from, but um, when I, when I did, the little bit I've seen in Russia's uh, subway system is like pristine. It's very, has a very modern-esque kind of feel to it. Uh, but also classy at the same time. So they're able to combine those elements. And it's just it's wild, you know. When you think of subways, right away your mind goes, you know, subterranean, not too keen, not too clean. But Russia and actually uh, parts of Europe too, their subways are uh, remarkable, different. Uh, we'll probably get some, you know, footage of that. Let's keep going. 
visas. The first thing we had to do was apply for a visa. Most people will have to do this as there are very few countries whose citizens can enter Russia visa free. For our visa application, we had to provide proof of arrival and departure dates and an invitation letter from either a tour provider or an accommodation that we had booked. We decided on a major hotel chain because they were more used to dealing with international visitors. The application process can take a few weeks and you'll have to send your passport away, so make sure you aren't going to need your passport during that time. There is a way, however, to visit St. Petersburg for three days visa-free if you arrive via ferry or cruise ship. If you book through an approved ferry or cruise provider, you will be allowed to arrive in St. Petersburg and stay in the city for up to 72 hours without needing a visa. This is a great option to visit one of Russia's most beautiful cities if you don't feel like going through the whole visa process. If you are traveling to Russia to attend the 2018 FIFA World Cup, then you are exempt from the regular visa rules. More uh, real quick, um, obviously the, the capital of Russia is Moscow, but St. Petersburg it's actually very attractive, and if you look at it, it kind of looks drastically different um, from the rest of Russia, and that's because the Tsar at the time, um, his name slips me, um, but he had a very this appreciation for Western Europe, and he wanted to model kind of Russia after that. So Saint Petersburg looks more like a town in, uh, yeah, like um, I don't want to say Spain, but like think of like you know Western Europe, like. Italy, Denmark, um, you know, Norway, England, France, Germany. So think of like that kind of style, you know, uh, where you could today you could definitely tell Russia apart from the, you know, Russia's technically in Asia, you know, but you could definitely tell it apart from other places with, without a doubt. But St. Petersburg definitely has a very familiar Western kind of, uh, vibe and look, but still Russia. Uh, so way different, and that's actually a good uh, trip because visas are very important. Um, it's like you know, pretty much like permission and reasoning why you're traveling abroad. Some places are more strict than others, you know. As we're seeing, th th this video is a little bit dated, you know. So, but I'm pretty sure the information she's, she's saying is pretty relevant still um, for my Russian audience watching. Uh, leave in the comments below if this still applies today, if anything has changed, especially when, it, especially now, you know what I mean, uh, when it comes to a Westerner or an American visiting Russia. More information on how to obtain your fan ID can be found online. Language. Once you get to Russia, you will find that English isn't widely spoken by the general population. Even in big cities like Moscow and St. Petersburg, most of the people we encountered spoke little to no English. St. Petersburg was slightly better since it's more of a tourist destination, but it still wasn't common to find English. Most of the signs are only written in the Cyrillic alphabet, which if you are unfamiliar with, will make it harder to find your way around. That being said, using hand gestures, Google Translate, and a little common sense, we had no problem interacting with the locals and finding our way around. A lot of restaurants around the main tourist areas had English or multiple language translations, and same with the maps and brochures of the major tourist attractions. Some attractions even had a dedicated English tours at certain time. Getting around. Both Moscow and St. Petersburg have quite awful traffic and taxis are quite expensive. Getting anywhere in a car or a bus can take a long time when the traffic gets bad. However, Moscow has an amazing metro system with a huge network of interconnecting lines which can get you across the city very efficiently. Once you grab a map, it's easy to navigate and the stations are even announced in English. It's very cheap to use and when we went, it was about 50 cents for a single use ticket which could get you anywhere in the city. Moscow is also known for some of the most beautiful metro stations in the world which have become very popular tourist attractions on their own. We use the metro almost exclusively to get anywhere we went during our stay. However, if you don't feel like walking between stations or if you don't feel comfortable with public transportation, Uber is a great alternative. It is significantly cheaper than taxis and there were lots of drivers, so when we did use it, we never had to wait long. The metro in St. Petersburg isn't nearly as extensive and the stations are more spread out. 
Here, we ended up relying a lot more on Uber. And in some cases, since there were three of us, our Uber rides actually ended up being a lot cheaper than having to buy three Metro passes. St. Petersburg is also more touristy and most of the main sites are located in what they call the golden triangle. So once you're in the center, it's walking distance between most things. There are also a lot of sightseeing buses and canal boats that will take you all along and around the main sites of the city. Money. The Russian currency is the ruble and expect to spend a lot of it. Russia was surprisingly more expensive than I thought it would be. Moscow is generally a very expensive city and St. Petersburg is not much cheaper. So plan that into your budget and find ways to save money. In Moscow, we chose a hotel that was on the outskirts of the city and a short walking distance from a metro station. Since the metro is so fast and easy to get around, we saved a huge amount of money compared to a hotel in the city center and without adding much travel time. If you are a student, there are some museums and attractions that offer a discounted admission if you yeah, so um, that's definitely good to know because money, 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 it's obviously, I mean, if you look at Russia and uh, especially recently, man, it, it's a very attractive city. So I cl clearly, you know, common sense, it's going to be expensive. Um, I wonder if she'll explain the whole exchanging currency thing because that's a thing, you know, obviously. I remember someone telling me when they traveled to Amsterdam. They put their card in an ATM, and the currency came out in, you know, the country he, w he was visiting, and, you know, their, their currency. Um, whereas if you, if you go to a bank, it's different, you know. Um, you know, it's like a whole process, but whatever, you know. Um, I would be doing, I guess, what normal tourists would do in, in Russia. I mean, obviously, I'm, a, I'm not that knowledgeable of the country, but I know enough, I think, um, you know, there's a language barrier, so there's that, you know, trying to get away. But like I said, especially today, I mean, if you've got some kind of smartphone, I feel like you, you can get around with it. Some places, not all, are semi-bilingual, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it would be a very interesting destination, Russia. It's just, it's way different. It's this, like, east meets west kind of deal. But, um... Like I said, it's probably intimidating, you know. I know, I, you know, I, well, I guess I speak for a lot of people. When you go somewhere new for the first time and, you know, English is not up front, you get, I feel like the people would probably appreciate you more if you attempt it, maybe like a word or two, uh, you know, in Russian or whatever in this case, you know. And they would, they, would, they would probably just like, oh, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. They might help you out. I don't know. I don't know. You know, um, I'm going on a limb. You know, the R Russian people are friendly. Some are probably stand offish. Who knows? You know, it's all all over the world. You're going to meet a mixed bag of people. So uh, never judge someone, uh, especially that represents their country, on a first time basis. You know, it could be just a bad day for that individual. Then, then you know, you come across someone who's super nice and tries to communicate you. But like, she's she definitely makes a good point. You know, I'm I'm Italian, so I use a lot of hand gestures as it is. And I would always, like, try to, like, act out something, you know, if I'm trying to explain to, you know, go to a hotel or, a, you know, a restaurant or whatever. I would definitely do my best to, you know, get that person to comprehend me, you know, if I didn't speak the language. So, these are all really, really useful tips, um, you know, stuff I, I kind of overlooked. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, these videos no matter how old they are, kind of, you know, relevant today. I mean, you should definitely, and this goes with anyone traveling to somewhere foreign. Um, yeah, do your research before you go, you know. You show a valid student ID. And if you're looking for a cheap lunch, look into something called business lunches. These are discounted meals that are meant for high turnover customers on their lunch breaks. The food selection will be limited and you'll be expected to eat quickly and not lounge around but you can save money on meals. Tickets and attractions. When it comes to purchasing tickets for tours, museums, or shows, I always recommend buying them online and in events whenever possible. There are some places that are very popular and tickets can sell out weeks in advance. In Moscow, for example, we actually missed out on getting to see the Armory Museum in the Kremlin because they only allowed limited admission each day and we didn't get our tickets in advance. If you do plan on visiting the Kremlin, it's good to note that there are separate admission tickets for the different sections such as Cathedral Square, 
the armory, and the bell tower. Weather. The weather in Russia can be quite unpredictable and change very quickly. We were there in the summertime, but some days it seemed like we were experiencing all four seasons within a few hours. So pack a variety of clothes, dress in layers, and don't expect the weatherman to be correct. Even if you- All right, so yeah, definitely. So that I've been hearing a lot recently. So my, I guess a lot of people's first impression of Russia you know really far north it's cold and yeah sure i mean definitely but there were some pictures you know uh i i forgot the month where it's like a bright sunny day you know it looks like it would be hot you know so you really can't just judge a country's weather by you know looking it up for the first time it could change like that you know um yeah, I guess that goes for, like, a lot of regions, too. Like I said, it's weird. It's weird. Like, the, the weather in Russia, you know, we're all used to it. You, you know, see, you know, knowing from movies and, you know, TV and documentaries, it's going to be cold and chilly. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's like a hot summer day, you know. But, uh, you know, definitely, you know, you want to look up the weather forecast in advance. And even then, just be prepared. Because, like this young lady saying... Uh, it, it ranges all over the place. That's completely true. Uh, you know, because I'll, I'll nerd out sometimes and I'll watch people do, like, you know, video blogs of them traveling, especially recently to Russia, which which is pr pretty shocking because um, it just, you know, here's a guy that didn't know nothing. The, 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 uh, this video blogger I'm talking about, and he's just strolling around. And he was getting by, you know, it's pretty cool. And, um, you know, at night, obviously, you're bundled up. But during the day, you know, it looked like a regular, sun, you know, summer day. So that I was kind of taken back by that. So weather in Russia, you know, it's that whole, like, where it's cold all the time, I feel like it's like a myth. So you really have to go there to experience it yourself. Um, yeah, it, like she says, it can be all over the place, you know. So definitely plan in advance with that. All right, let's keep going. If you are leaving your hotel on a warm, sunny day, it's a good idea to take a small bag or backpack to carry an umbrella, raincoat, or maybe even a light sweater. For women, a scarf is a good idea because some of the churches will require women to cover their heads when they go inside. Food. If you are a foodie, there are a lot of interesting and unique Russian dishes to discover. We tried quite a few of them and found most of them to be quite good. One of our favorites was a dish of potato dumplings, which we ended up having multiple times. But if you aren't interested in trying the local cuisine, you'll be happy to know that in the city, there are many international restaurants and familiar fast food chains. So you'll be able to find whatever you want. What to see and do. Mm -hmm. That's really good to know because obviously you're going to eat on vacation, so you want to be exotic and try something new and weird, you know. Yeah, you know. Hopefully, you know. Sometimes the menus may not be bilingual, I guess, especially if you go deeper, I guess, into the country, out of the tourist zones. But you know, you want to have that real rich experience. You know, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, that's what people told me anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously in the picture we saw Starbucks. And, uh, you know, had Nike store and, you know, there's probably a Burger King or McDonald's around there. So, obviously, if you're used to, you know, if you want to ease into it and go that direction, you could probably do that too. You know, I, I know someone who traveled to Japan and for like the first week they ate, like, you know, from McDonald's because that's all they, you know, they were, they had to build themselves up to like go into an actual authentic Japanese restaurant and, you know, you make the mistake of ordering the wrong thing or whatever, but you know, whatever. It's an experience traveling, and these guides that this lady's talking about, you know, these do's and don'ts are very, very important. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm learning myself a lot of stuff. I don't know everything about Russia or the countries that you know I would you know quote unquote you know research or whatever. So it's it's always good to hear someone else's perspective and uh, you know give you some tips and tricks. All right, let's keep going. Moscow and St. Petersburg are very different cities, but they both offer some incredible sights. Places we enjoyed in Moscow were Red Square, where we visited St. Basil's Cathedral and the Goom Department Store, the Kremlin, which contains Ivan the Great Bell Tower, the Tsar Cannon, the Tsar Bell, several cathedrals, gardens, and the Armory Museum that unfortunately we missed out on. Arbit Street, which was the most touristic street in Moscow, with lots of places to eat, plenty of shops to buy, 
all the souvenirs you could ever want. The metro stations, which are not only beautifully constructed, but also amazingly clean for being one of the busiest metros in the world. For further souvenir shopping, you can hop on the metro and head to the Ismailovsky Flea Market. The prices here are generally cheaper compared to the more touristy Arbet Street, although the market itself was a bit run down when we were there. Barrow Hill is also a popular place to stop and get a nice view of the modern city of Moscow. Here you'll also find Moscow State University, which is located in one of the seven matching Stalinistic skyscrapers referred to as the Seven Sisters. In St. Petersburg, we recommend going to the Church of the Savior on Spilled Blood. The entrance fee is totally worth it and the inside is full of amazing ornate decorations. At so yeah, that is definitely something I would check out. I love um, religious history and how different church buildings are structured. Obviously, I told you before, I'm into that whole, you know, Eastern Orthodoxy look, you know, the, the dome churches and uh, those frescoes and all that stuff uh, that are inside the church. And, you know, Russia has a lot of them that date back, you know, 5th, 6th, 7th century stuff. Uh you know, a lot of, and a lot of those churches are influenced by, you know, Byzantine churches and stuff. Anyway, um, that's something, you know, it might come across as boring to some people looking at, you know, churches and historic buildings. I love that stuff. So, yeah, I would definitely be at home <laughs> here, you know. Um, I would definitely make my way somehow to these places and check it out and uh, take a lot of pictures, obviously. That would, I would, that would probably give myself away with that and opening my mouth, you know. They'd be like, oh, this is an American here. Um but yeah, yeah, it's it's really good to know. You know, it's so a lot of planning, obviously. But you know, sp specific, particular planning when it comes to Russia, you know, because um, it's just that far out. You know, you got to really, really, really kind of, you know, have yourself a itinerary for that day. You know, like okay, today I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, I mean, I'm sure you could do stuff at random, but I guess to be on the safe side, to see what you actually want to see, you really got to be careful and not miss certain deadlines and whatever. Uh, but yeah, all, all interesting stuff. This is uh, very informative for sure. Okay. A canal cruise is also a great way to see the sights and to get a different perspective from one of the many canals that run through the city. The Kazan can... Cathedral and St. Isaac's Cathedral are also great places to see. We didn't go inside, but you could go inside if you wanted to, or you can climb the stairs to the colonnade to get a great view of the city. You can do both, you can do one or the other, it's your choice really. And you can't go to St. Petersburg without going to Palace Square, which is home to the Winter Palace. What was once a lavish residence of the Russian monarchs is now part of the Hermitage Museum, which is one of the largest and most impressive museums in the world. You can definitely spend an entire day inside the Hermitage Museum and still not see everything. We also went to Peter and Paul's Fortress, which in hindsight is something I wish we didn't do. We didn't have enough time to see See everything we wanted to and we would have rather spent that time by going to Peterhof's palace. It's located outside of the city and it's roughly a 40 minute boat ride to get there. Peterhof, which is sometimes referred to as the Russian Versailles, is also one of the top things to see in St. Petersburg and unfortunately we never made it out of there and it is kind of one of our regrets that we wish we went out there instead. Safety. Despite all the negative stories that the news likes to sensationalize, we never felt threatened or like we were in any danger. However, there are some things that we've heard of that you should be aware of. One thing is that you should be careful of taking photos of any government, military, or security buildings. If you're not sure, it's best to air. Very important. Same thing goes, I mean, if you ever plan, I don't know why, who would do this, but whatever. If you ever want to go to like North Korea, you know, um, you can't take pictures of just about everything. I guess I assume, uh, not saying that the Russian military is paranoid or nothing, but you know, privacy, you know, that's like, you know, a foreigner going to Washington, D.C. and leaving the tour guide and going, just taking pictures of the White House, whatever, you know, it, it would raise a few alarms. And I guess it goes the same here. So that's definitely a, a good, good lesson right there. Um, I mean, there's going to be pickpocketers, uh, people trying to con you into something that's that's throughout the world. That'll always happen. Um, 
and I think you know the people I'm talking to have common sense uh, enough to be aware of that um, anywhere you travel, really. Uh, but that, yeah, yeah, definitely because um, I, I do hear the whole taking pictures of things you're not supposed to. That's very kind of sensitive, especially when it comes to countries like Russia or you know Turkey or wherever you know. But um, always be aware of those kind of things, you know, because. The simple mistakes like that could cause a big issue, and you don't want that uh, ruining your experience or whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a very good point that you uh, picked out there. Air on the side of caution. There have been cases of tourists being arrested or fined for suspicious activity, even though it was purely innocent in intent. Also, you should always have a photocopy of your passport and visa because police can demand to see your papers if they decide to question you for any reason. Though this is a good idea to do no matter where you travel to. The bottom line is Russia isn't as dangerous as the Western media likes to portray and the average tourist shouldn't be worried about traveling there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe you got some ideas or inspiration for your own upcoming trip to Russia. If you want to see more videos like this and you want to recommend specific countries or destinations for future videos, let us know in the comments and hit that like button. If you aren't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any videos. That's it for now and I'll see you guys again in a few days time. With another video. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, that was super informative. Um, like I said, I am going to hit up Russia one of these years. I plan to do some traveling later in life if I can, you know, but like I said, Russia has always been on the list and, um, this is actually super. And like I said, you know, um, anywhere you travel, anywhere in the world, you want to know a good amount of information just so you don't get in trouble. And, you know, the experience of traveling is, you know, more easier on you and it's actually a likable travel, but first timers, you, you know, I expect to make mistakes. If you're traveling somewhere new for the first time ever, expect to make mistakes. And it might be uncomfortable, it might be hard, and you might, like, you know, think to yourself, what the hell was I thinking? But no, you know, it's all part of the experience. And uh, videos like this, super informative. And, uh, yeah, I definitely learned something uh, new, for sure, you know. I learned a lot, actually. So, yeah, this was awesome. All right, guys, well, look, um, let me know what you think. Um my Russian subscribers, uh, is she accurate? You know, is there anything else I should know before I travel to Russia? You know, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want me to do a, a video, whether it be something like this or a song, and you want me to kind of expedite that process, down below and leave a link, buy me a coffee. It's just another way of supporting the channel. And of course, uh, you know, you can leave me a little comment on a video or a song you'd like me to get to, and I'll obviously do that um, before anything. So, um, that's really it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll see you all very, very soon. Peace.